All right, let's talk Last of Us Episode 1. Let me preface this video by saying I did not play this game, although I had the game. I did not fully play it. I played maybe 30 minutes. I'm, I'm an absolute pussy for scary video games. So if you think that you're going to get some Easter egg video or something like that, there's definitely better channels out there that'll show that. So please go there for that content. So really, I'm going over this and watching this completely fresh. No lore, nothing. I, I really just went over some of the character stuff here and there, but nothing too crazy in depth. Because I like to do that before I watch shows or if I know pilots are coming out for certain shows I want to watch. I don't want to go in with crazy expectations. I want to just go in completely raw and have the feeling like I've never seen it before and it's a brand new story. That's usually how I watch these things. That being said, coming back to this point, oh my god man, these guys are creepy, the zombies here. And it's funny because after episode one I had to go back and see some gameplay video and they did not have those fungus little things coming out of you know the people's mouth. That's crazy. That's super creepy. Now I've not watched episode two but I heard that there's more... Uh, a fungal mouth action there so <laughs> i can't wait to get started on that i gotta stop talking to my friend he keeps ruining stuff for me whenever i talk to him but yeah goddamn leave it up to hbo to do something really realistic and creepy with the zombies right now at least it's like we've seen the zombies with the face ripped off and the you know half bitten or half eaten bodies but we've not seen the zombies that look completely normal at least in the beginning and just have little things coming out of their orifices around their faces. Oh man, it's it's a really, really good, well done masterpiece in terms of making the zombies look a little intimidating. Now we'll put one spoiler in this video, so if you don't want to watch this uh, to get any spoilers, then go watch the episode first, highly recommend it. The best part about this show so far is that they make things very grounded into reality. Now, I did play the first, maybe, I played the, the game for about 30 minutes, right? So it doesn't give you too much lore or too much background as to what the virus is and all this stuff. Well, not virus, fungi. But the fungi here, you know, the first maybe, what, 15 minutes is kind of like an exposition on that. And a lot of times when you do these game adaptations, the first episode is always like fan service, really. So I was hoping that they didn't do too much of that, but they gave a little bit of backstory, which is pretty much enough. And, and they don't give you too much to go on, really. It's just enough to give you some context and you have to build the rest on your own, which is really fantastic. It makes you want to continue watching to find out what else is going to happen. And the best part is, you know, like with Tommy and Joe and Sarah in the beginning, they really give you a sense of you know, this eeriness, right? Ever since they give you that context in the first scene, you're always wondering what's going to happen next. Even though, I guess, you know, those who played the game, you, you know what's going to happen next. But it's one of those things where it really keeps you on your toes. You're wondering, like, what next bit is going to get our characters? And, and the best part is, with such a short time, they establish such a good relationship between Sarah and Joe. And, well, not really Tommy. I mean, they didn't really go too much in detail about him. But Sarah and Joe, for sure. And, man, it does it really hurt? Because they make this relationship. They get out of the initial problem that they see originally. It feels like she escaped with her life very narrowly. And then all of a sudden, she dies. And she dies in the worst way. I like the show because it, it's realistic in a way that you can actually see yourself in that situation. It's really hard to survive these kind of things in the real world, right? If it was to happen, I'm sure you'd think you can get out and stuff. But it's very unlikely. So for you to actually be able to carry your daughter like Joe did and get out of all those things just to meet up with a military guy who gets that order to basically shoot people on sight. You know, that must be gut-wrenching for a father. And I, I, I am a father. I have two girls. And it's man, it was that scene was just hard for me to swallow. So it, they did that building the relationship up for the whole first half of the show and then completely just destroying it and it was it really hit hard and then they went to the future joe where he's kind of a broken man but he does have a small sense of purpose but i don't know i can't ruin too much of it i really said recommend you go watch it but the the character building on this so far just from the first episode is fantastic you really want to follow joe <laughs> you're very invested in what this character is going to do because really now it's like he has nothing to lose. Like, what, what more is he living for? But he does continue to live. So you really want to follow the story and see what's happening. Of course, there's Ellie and Ellie comes into the life. And, you know, to be honest, my one gripe is, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like Ellie, they made her a little too annoying. <laughs> I don't know. I just have this issue with characters in, in TV shows. They just make them really annoying sometimes and it's hard to shake them off. But Ellie so far to me is really, really annoying looking. But, you know, it is what it is. And so we're just getting introduced to the characters. But let me know what you think in the comment section below if you think Ellie's annoying. But lastly, I want to mention that I was a bio major. So, biology. So, I did actually learn about a lot of these fungal infections and stuff like that. And the cordyceps is a very real thing, by the way. This is not something that affects humans just yet. But it does affect animals or ants, actually, in this case. And the thing that's... Uh, I remember reading this when I was in school. But there's this thing that affects cicadas in South America. And it is super, super creepy, man. I think it's called the Maso Mas Masospora or Masospora, whatever you want to call it. I'll leave some articles in the in the description down below if you want to take a look. But this is, this is a very real thing. This is not something they made up on the fly. 
Um, you know, this isn't like the T-virus or something where it's just like randomly made up. This is a very real thing that exists. Like in the case of the Mesospora, this thing is not the same thing as the cordyceps by any means, but I remember this from textbooks and stuff, but people basically found these cicadas, which are pretty much dead. They, they were like hollowed out and stuff, but somehow they're still walking around, which is creepy, right? Because you look at it and it's like, holy crap, is this thing alive? How is this thing alive by any means? Its neural functions got hijacked and essentially is pretty much a zombie. So it's very creepy if this can make the jump to humans. I don't think that'll be possible to be very honest with you, but evolution does happen. It does occur randomly as mutations in the wild. So who knows, right? But uh, I like the fact that it is grounded in some sort of science. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you think of the first episode. I think it's fantastic. I'm going to follow this series pretty much right to the end from the looks of it. But until next time, catch y'all later. Peace.